Welcome into another telecast of LMC Varsity Sports alongside Robert Reamer. I'm Charlie McGraw. We're here at Mamaroneck High School for the boys. Section 1 Class A quarterfinal boys lacrosse game. A rematch from two weeks ago when Mamaroneck beat Suffern 15-4. What does Suffern have to do to uh, make this one closer this time, Robert? Well, they're really going to have to stop Mamaroneck's offense led by Chris Conley and um, Reed Mallis. Last time they were able to score way too many goals against them, so they're really going to need to crack down on those two players. Players, I believe, to be able to keep the numbers lower um, in order to win this game. We'll see if Suffern's defense can do that. When we get back, we'll have the opening faceoff here on LMC Varsity Sports. on LMC Varsity Sports. Once again, alongside Robert Reamer, I'm Charlie McGraw. On the cameras today, we got Rob Moretti, Xavier Campo, and Asher, Asher, Collins. Asher Collins. Should have a good uh, matchup, Robert. Uh, two versus the seven. Yeah, it's um, pretty nice day out. It was thunderstorming earlier today, but um, it's cleared up for Good day to play the cross. And the Marinac wins the face off. And an early goal scored by Eric Greenberg on a rip from about 10 yards out. And it's quickly 1-0, 12 seconds in. That, that's not good for um, Suffern. They need to be uh, stopping the Marinac's offense because they're not going to be able to score upwards of 15 goals in this game, I don't think. And so letting up one goal in 12 seconds isn't a good sign. And that was like a submarine angle, yeah. that shot. Like a pitcher with the submarine shot, as that one is won by Ben Shapiro again. And Ben Shapiro's huge on the faceoffs from Amerinek. Yeah, I remember last year, they'd bring him in just for the faceoffs and then take him out. Now, good enough to play the whole time, but certainly an advantage for them. Shapiro's a junior, as Amerinek has the ball and Suffern lines up their defense here. And at the top, the 40 now is Reed Malice, their star player, and he'll shoot it and the save. And scored by Greenberg. So Greenberg's got two goals in 46 seconds, and it's quickly 2 nothing. Give Malice an assist. He, he yep. took the shot that was um, deflected out to Greenberg. Yeah, that one was a little easier than the last goal for him. <laughs> Just had to toss it in. Malice gets the assist and two goals for Greenberg as these two played 15 days ago here. Game that was on LMC Varsity Sports, 15-4. When Marinette beat Suffern. But Reed Malice already, uh, he committed two years ago. He's a senior now, but he was committed two years ago yeah. to Bucknell. And uh, a couple kids on Bronson, one kid is like a sophomore or junior, he's already committed to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That was a game earlier in the year I went to, and Bronxville dominated my Marinette. Even though they're a class uh, C, they're one of the best teams in Section 1 behind Yorktown, as Malice has it. And we haven't seen the ball in the pockets of uh, Suffern yet in the first minute and fifth, uh, 20 seconds. They've been dominating the possession here, has Marinette. As this one will be swung to Jack Harrigan from Chris Conley behind the goal. What does Suffern have to do to get like a turnover here, you know, and get possession of the ball for the first time? I mean, I think you got to play looser around the edges, but of course, and really collapse in when, you know, you can't let up shots like that. So when they get really inside. As Malice with the goal after a great save by Suffern goalie uh, Brian Nickbon. All right, I mean, at this point, Marinick's just almost walking up to the goal. And take, you, you know, it isn't that difficult for them to penetrate, so I think um, Suffern needs to be a little more aggressive on defense. Excuse me, uh, Nick Pon is a defender, a defenseman. The goalie is Dan Sharp who made that save. Dan Sharp with the nice save, but then they scored after. That was his first save of the game. 
three nothing. Mamarinek, 10, 12 remaining. So just a minute 48 in. Violation on Mamarinek and Suffern will have their first possession of the game here. 10-10 to go. It took a minute and 50 for that to happen. Aiden Anderson has it, plays it to Suffern's uh, Isaiah Van Dunk. Plays it in to Tim Patwell. Back to Anderson. As we have a double header here is after this game, it will be uh, Mamaronek girls lacrosse in the quarterfinals against Mayapak, who won in double overtime. <laughs> I think they beat Suffern in double overtime. As that one is saved there by the goalie, Jack Denty. Denty didn't start the year as a starting goalie, but he won that. He took it away from incumbent goalie, Nick Schlegel. As Mayapak beat Clarkstown South, the girls 15-2. Uh, this one is scored by Chris Conley, 4-0 Mamaronek. Early timeout, Sapper. 8.59 left in the first half, three minutes and one second in, and it is already 4-0 Mamaronek here at Mamaronek High School. We'll be right back on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, violation on Suffern. And the face-off win for Ben Shapiro, violation by C.J. Greco. And it'll go to the Tigers, and Malice will have it, looking for his second goal of the game. As it'll be played up here to Greenberg, looking for an early hat trick. He'll fake it, make a nice move, pass it across. It'll be played and scored. A bouncing goal by Jack Harrigan. 5 0, assisted by Charlie Harris. And lacrosse, they don't give second assists, I don't think. Yeah. They maybe should on that play. Um, Suffering was just completely bewildered. But, Greenberg, <laughs> Greenberg would have got it. But not only that, just. Mamarinek is just passing way more, like way quicker than they could even really conceptualize. You know, it's just they couldn't get their defensive set in time. And Suffern wins that face off easy. Brandon Fee, maybe he should be taking more of them as he made uh, Shapiro. He won that one easy. 5 nothing. Suffern looking to get on the board, which is their second possession of the game. 8 10 to go here in the first quarter. In the Class A quarterfinals, Mamaronek got a bye. Winner plays White Plains, who beat North Rockland 19-11 earlier in the day. Suffern beat number 10, Clarkstown South, 10-4 two days ago, actually. The Mayapak girls team who's playing um, Mamaronek after this game on this field, which we'll have on OMC Varsity Sports, also beat Suffern rather Clarkstown handedly, too. I also beat Clarkstown South. Thank you for the correction, LMC. Community sports producer, Rob Moretti. He's on top of things, Rob. Yeah. And that one will be brought in by the Mounties. We got one shot in the game. It was a save by Denty. Mm. This one in front and a scoop shot and a like deflection. Patwell hits it over, but they will retain possession as Van Dunk mm. was closest to it for the Mounties. So he'll have it here and maybe he'll try and pass it out, or we'll see what he'll do as he is guarded heavily by Brett Young. And that one will be played by Suffern. And a fake by Greco. Young's on him. Oof. And Greco with a rifle wide of the goal. That one had some mustard and then yeah, some. definitely. Missed it by just a couple of feet. That's on target, that's easy, easy uh, goal. Right. This one will be brought in by the Mounties. They've had it for the last minute. A 
Van Dunk with it. Ominous skies. Forecast by meteorologist Rob Moretti says. Not a chance. Later tonight. <laughs> Not a chance for this game though. And by meteorologist we mean LMC Community <laughs> Sports Producer. The uh, sh shadows as a well his iPhone is his meteorologist. <laughs> Behind the goal with it is Dayton Anderson. He'll make a move and escape. And the ball just flies out of his stick and it goes out and it'll go to the Tigers. So good defense caused that turnover. And Anderson uh, lost it and went flying in the air, Rob. Yeah, I think he uh, must have hit his arm and uh, caused it to go way off from his intended target. That was good defense by Mamaronek to cause that. Suffern, uh, he's got to find the net a couple of uh, times in the final 5.55 of this first quarter, though. You don't want to let Mamarinek get a touchdown lead, you know, if they two more and <laughs> down seven early. That would be bad. Yep. Nice play, and that shot is wide by Charlie Harris. Good pass by Conley. Conley will fire it back to Harris, and what a catch by Harris to get that one. Yep, I, there's some raindrops already. Already a couple raindrops and that play to Harrigan, Ewald. Finally some good defense by um, Suffern in that possession. A good play there and picking it up and firing it forward was Harley Jotso. And it's scored for the Mounties. Van Dunk slams one home and it is 5-1. Mamarinek, nice play there. You know who, great play by Harley Jotso, the defenseman. Uh, he got that and he found the man and Van Dunk made the defense pay as it's 5-1. Good play though by the defense, as you said, Rob. Well, yeah, and that was able to give them momentum in transition, which I think was key to scoring that um, goal because so far in sufferings on offense, they haven't been able to pass ball around. So they really need to take that, you know, initial um, jolt to be able to score. And Greco wins that face off as second win. Already had seven face-offs, the opening one and after the six goals. Cross is a high scoring game, but five quick goals by Mamarinek in the first four minutes. And they've settled down though. That one is missed by the Mounties. Closest to it was Luke Shedler. I think they gotta work some clock and you know get a real good right. shot again. And he's a decent goalie, but he's definitely beatable as Denti, just right. a sophomore. He wasn't even the starter to begin the year. He took the job away from Schlegel. And that one is played, and a save by Denti on the firing shot by Greco. Yeah, good save there, but I mean, I think you're right. It hasn't been, it's really been the shots on goal that's been the issue. Not, Getting, not yeah. so much uh, Denti being Getting, getting yeah. the shots off. Right. As Malice with the bouncer a bit high over goalie Dan Sharp. But uh, yeah, the sh they got to get their shots on target. They had mm. those nice shots before, but they were well wide, and mm. which don't count as a shot. It's like hockey, you got to get it on target. Drizzle's picking up again. Greenberg is hit by Suffren, and we got our first penalty of the game as some laundry th thrown by the official. And it'll be a, an advantage, and Matlas with the ripper bounces in front and over Sharp, and the Suffern goal. 342, our first penalty against either team, the Mounties. Penalty was uh, against to uh, Harley Jatos, who uh, was the reason the first goal happened. On that assist, when he got the steal and brought it up from the defense, and the defender is out. Or I think it would be it'll be 30 seconds. That one is wide by Conley. Sharp was ready for it, but it was wide of him. Marinick mm. will keep possession. It seems as though Suffern's willing to let Marinick from about 15 feet away take whatever type of shot they want. Which isn't the best uh, <laughs> game plan. Right. 
Malice with a cutting play. America has some good passes and catches on them. As the man is back. Actually, it's Mich Michelin. Mich Michelini, who came back in, Matthew Michelini. I think the penalty, it's like hockey, I mean, they can go back on the bench, like in high school hockey, where the boxes are right next to it. And then if someone else can come in. I guess that's what they did there. Suffering looking to cut the deficit, and they do! Nice goal there by Brandon Fee, and it's 5-2. to two With 2.44 to go in the first, and Suffern has two straight goals here at the Meridak. Uh, and, well, until I heard the fans to our right, I didn't realize <laughs> they're all here for Suffern. Pretty substantial crowd coming here today, and good thing their team gone back into this. Yeah, 5 0, and there was only one shot on goal, and now it's third or second straight win of the faceoff. Greco looking for the goal right there, but he bounces it wide after getting the thing. A good idea by CJ Greco. They'll keep possession, and he'll get it back and looking to go quickly towards the goal. And oh. that one, they're about to, if he had scored that, it would have been two goals in like four seconds. That one's played forward, and we have a little scrum for the ball and a foul against the Mounties. And it'll be Mamarinac call. Harris will pick it up and bring it forward for the Tigers. Well, see, gonna... This game has seemed to even out a bit in the last um, seven minutes. Sovereign's actually outscored Mamarinac 2-1. to one. So it was really just that initial surge. But Mamarinac did score the first five goals of the game. No, of course. Yeah. And that one will be... Saved after Greenberg shot a save by Sharp, his second. Two saves from each goalie, Denty and Sharp. Greenberg was looking for that early hat trick again as of course this isn't the only high-paced action game going on right now. His first game of the Eastern Conference Finals in hockey. Rangers and Tampa. And that one will be Rod Flower. Hopefully Tampa Bay didn't bring the lightning with them as uh, thunderstorms hopefully will stay out of the forecast as they're supposed to. And that one will be brought and scored. Greenberg with the assist. Goal for Alex Ewald, his first of the game. Ewald, Conley. Harrigan and Greenberg twice. As Greenberg's got an assist now. And it is 6 2 Tigers. Got a pretty steady drizzle right now. I don't know if we uh, brought the rain gear. <laughs> we, we have it, so no matter, no matter what, we'll be able to broadcast this game. And that one is won by Ben Shapiro. And falling to the ground, and the hit stick is hit away from Harley. And a foul against the Marinette, and it'll be suffering ball with one minute and six seconds remaining in the first quarter. So a nice move to get by the hit there, Thomas Schember from Chris Conley. And the stick is knocked out of the hands twice that happened. Suffering players losing their stick in the last 10 seconds there. Judson and then Patwell. And Marinette will have it back, and if they can choose so. Wow, a nice save there by, what a save by Jack Harrigan to keep it in my marriage possession as 35 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Harris going through a wall of defenders, knocked away. Off the post. Off the post. As he was guarded by Nick Pond and two other. And Michelini and Vigia. Only 18 seconds. Just saving for the last shot. Just like I feel like that's a, a little less practical though than um, cross. And three seconds, and there's a scrum for the ball, and it'll be. 
Oh, there's one second left About on the one clock. One second, and the whistle will sound here on the first quarter, so it'll be 6-2 Mamaronek after they started the game up 5 nothing. We'll be right back with the second quarter here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, and that one will be won on a hustle play by Ben Shapiro, new goalie for Suffern. Brad Schulman replaces Dan Sharp here to start the second quarter. Nice play, though, by Shapiro. Knocked it forward, put his stick, and then knocked it back to save it from a Marinek, and they'll start again. Faceoffs are key. They've won about 65, 70% so far. Yeah, definitely. It's, Suffern maybe won four of them. We've had about 10, so 60% from a Marinek, just about. And if you compare it to defensive stops in this game, it's almost as important, you know, it, these teams are, especially in Marinic, maybe scoring half the possessions are out there, so certainly the face-offs are very important. And that one will be played by the Tigers. They'll swing it around, and the shot will be bounced wide by Harrigan. Harrigan had a goal in that first quarter. That'll be played in by Ewalt, who had the last goal for the Tigers of the quarter. And that one is a beautiful setup by Conley to Harris, but Harris missed the easy layup there, and it'll be Mamarina keeping the possession. So they've had it for the, this entire second quarter, only minute 15 gone by. Malice double teams. They definitely game plan for him. And that one will be scored. Alex Eric Ewald. Greenberg to Alex Ewald. Two for Ewald, two assists for Greenberg, and it is seven to two, Tigers. Greenberg's pretty good player uh, there, Rob. No, definitely. Um, doesn't always need to score, even though he will a certain fair amount of times but really just setting up almost everything Mermanic does. He was doing that last year, too. He had four or five goals when we went, uh, when we did the, our first game we did of the year, it was in March, long ago, uh, against Wong Tai, it was snowing. And that one is scored by the Suffern Mounties and CJ Greco, seven to three, so a quick answer from Suffern. But he had four or five goals in that game against Wong Tai in the snow and the rain and, Did Greenberg. Go up, White. Go separate. Isaiah Van Dunk. CJ Greco and Brandon Fee with the goals for Suffern. Assist by Harley Jutso on the first goal. Goal and assist for Reed Malice. Goal for Chris Conley and Jack Harrigan. Two goals apiece for Alex Ewald and Eric Greenberg. Greenberg also has two assists. Hard hit there by Suffern, and it'll be brought against here as fans starting to get into this game. And Greenberg, get out your hats! Hat trick for Eric Greenberg, and it is eight to three. Well, it's quite a manufacturer of goals, uh, eight. Not even halfway through second quarter, Mermanek really on fire on offense right now. Not missing the goal. That's the difference, the shots. First of all, they're taking more shots because they're out possessing mm -hmm. Suffern, but Suffern is more uh, missing, you know, to the left, to the right. I mean, they're starting to connect more now, but Mermanek's uh, shot percentage has to be pretty high. Right, and even from just an eye test, Mermanek seems more confident in what they do than um, Suffern. And I think, realistically, that's gonna have to change if Suffern wants to get back in this game. They really, you know, it's not gonna be a fluke. They're really gonna need to make some game plan adjustments. And the first uh, time we don't have Ben Shapiro take the face off, it'll be taken by J.M. Nottigan, not Nochin, excuse me. J.M. Nochin, who wasn't on the team earlier in the year. Just call, look, call up from JV. It wasn't on the roster against Monta. Oh yeah, they didn't give us a roster, excuse me. And then, so Mamaronek will have it here. Although, 
I don't remember him playing in that game, Rob. Good hit there by Sufferns. Evan Margolin. Oh, and Carey was there too. And the Marinek looking to make it 9-3. That one will go wide easily. On it was Ewald, but it goes out of bounds wide and it'll go to the Mounties with 9-21. Every time the ball goes out, it's like there's a stoppage in play. That was a hit. And the flag was thrown, and we'll see who the... Looks like it was against Conley. Suffering called the timeout before the hit, though, maybe. So we'll get you the call when we get back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports following the timeout taken by Suffern and it wound up that that timeout taken by Coach David McNally had bad timing because they would have had a penalty against Chris Conley, but the, penalty, the timeout was taken about two or three seconds before. So McNally with bad timing on that timeout cost a man advantage for Suffern. That's the translation uh, that looks like it was the call there, Rob. And that one will be played behind the goal out by Patwell. Patwell passes to Van Dunk, who passes to Greco. Greco goes towards the goal. Bad angle and a, another wide shot by Suffern. It'll be kept in there as closest to it was Patwell. It'll be played by the Mounties. And it'll be played here by Dayton Anderson behind the goal. Denty turns to face him properly as he's guarded there by O'Rourke. And Anderson has it back. And the goal, Greco. Van Dunk with it, passing to Schember. Suffering taking their time here. They go to the goal now to Schember and a bouncing shot way wide and it'll be saved. Uh, by Suffern. Screco will keep their possession. This one will be shot and save. Loose ball right in front of the goal and Denty has it on top. And a little hit there. Remnants of hockey as Ryan LeBlanc hit Fee as Fee was trying to wrestle it from the goalie. And anyone who watches hockey knows if your goalie has the puck and the other offensive player comes, you're going to get hit hard. And he did hit him. And Marinek will keep it and play it forward. Good play by Denty, but uh, LeBlanc definitely gave him a hit there. We'll have a timeout. Nope, it'll just be a substitution. As Greenberg will bring it up here, 7.25 to go. As this one will be brought in by Harris. Harris will get by the check, and it'll be brought up, and Suffern will have it as Brendan Linehan will bring it up for the Mounties. They'll have the numbers advantage towards the goal, and a miss on the shot attempt by Patwell. The penalty will have a penalty against the Tigers in their first official one. go against Ryan LeBlanc. So a penalty each from each team. It's defenders. 
LeBlanc had one, and Jetso has just had one, and Jetso had one earlier for Suffer. And it'll be played in. But Marinette didn't score on that man advantage, though. And that man advantage that never happened because of the penalty t uh, timeout taken. So this is the first man advantage for Suffer. Usually 30 seconds or a minute, depending on the penalty. This is for a minute, and that shot is saved by Denty. Best save of the game, deflected, is on the release, has got a piece of it, was Patwell. Brought forward, man down, and they'll come back as the penalty expires, and that one is wide of the goal, and the shot by Malice. So after scoring six goals in the first quarter, just two with halfway through the second, and this one, Suffern has one, so it's 2-1 in this quarter. This one will be played by Conley. And Conley will bounce it wide, and it will be kept in, though, by Harrigan, and a rip by Harris is wide and high. Charlie Harris and Chris Conley are two of the smaller players on the field, but they're pretty good, uh, Rob. Well, I don't know how much uh, height is really an advantage in the cost in a lot of ways when you can be more versatile. Oh, good idea. That's true, but and you got to have some muscle, you know, no, to, no, of to fight off hits and to take uh, strong plays. Right. And but they seem to be to able to utilize hits. their body type very well for what they're trying and stuff. to do. Right, yeah. Because that one was saved by Schulman. And he will play it forward. Will the mount ease? And they'll hand it off to Van Dunk. He goes towards the goal, hit there, and Quinton Sakakini with the hard hit. Suffer will bring it forward though, and they will work it around. And brought in here by the Mounties. So, 4.38 to go here in the first half, and it is 8-3. Marinek brought in by Suffern's Luke Shedler, who passes. Pass there to Van Dunk from Kyle Billy. Ooh, and a high stick inadvertent, no call. LeBlanc was running into Billy. As the Suffern fans get on the official. Because they're giving it to him, they gave it to him before too. Usually it's when a team's losing, their fans tend to yell at the official a lot more. <laughs> I bet they should do a study on that though. <laughs> that would be an easy study then. <laughs> it would be like closer than you think because both fans, you know, you know right. uh, as that shot is wide, but Yeah, they should do that in one of your statistics classes at NYU. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Taking that <laughs> Yeah, I forgot this like sabermetric stuff. Yeah. Let's like focus on the fans and what they're doing. That too really matters. In Sammy's class at uh, <laughs> Sam Blunt's class at Michigan, they would just find that Michigan fans just booed the most because <laughs> they got the bad product. <laughs> well, that one is wide of Denty suffering with the uh, pressure here, but they can't find the net as they got to. Want to cut the lead to, to get the half, half the amount of goals as Mamaronek. This one brought in by Dayton Anderson, plays it to Billy. Shedler. Brought in here. Knocked to the ground. And the shot by Van Dunk is knocked way wide. And it'll be a stay with suffering. As there is 2.40 to go in the second quarter. 8-3, Mamaronek. 
Van Dunk will have it. Get low, T, get low! Two ten remaining. Schember has it. He will. That's good, D, Wayne! And the shot is deflected off of a Maranek. Stay with Suffer with 159 in the first half. The scoring has died down a bit, certainly in the last couple of minutes. Definitely has. It's been yeah. about five minutes since the last goal, I think. By suffering, suffering. Which is interesting because normally it's the other way around as the defense is getting more tired. He had that one goal, or I think the last goal was scored by suffering. And that one will be finally switched the possession because that one goes wide in front of the uh, 10 yard line. So it'll be out of bounds and it'll be after. Two and a half minutes of possession by Suffern. They can't score. Only got, I think, one goal on target, one shot yeah. on target. And a penalty coming called against the Mounties. So they'll have a man advantage to end the quarter if they can't score here. Will Mamarinek looking to expand their lead to six, as it's eight three with 50 seconds left here in the first half at Mamarinek High School. Overcast day. Sun is trying to pop out as Malice has it. Malice will throw it. And it'll be played by Conway. Uh, they're going to call timeout, I guess. And we will be right back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, final 37 seconds. That ball went off of Mamarinik. But because of the penalty, as Mamarinik is still in the huddle, their defense and goalie, and now they'll come out. But they were, um, there was a penalty called against Suffern. So going to a knee on the side will be Brandon Fee. And that one will be played by Ewald to Malice. Out to Greenberg. 25 seconds to go in the second quarter. Marinek leading Suffern 8 3. Marinek is the two seed because of strength to schedule and others. And a nice save made by Schulman. Looks at the clock, sees 10 seconds, throws a bomb, and it'll go out. Over the head of the goalie from Marinek, Jack Denty. That was a huge throw there by Schulman. Four seconds and a huge throw coming up. One, and it'll hit the turf with zero. So Schulman with the good save as he came in off the bench. And I'm sure, probably he'll start the third. So after, it's 8-3 after 24 minutes of play. We'll be right back with the third quarter here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Second half, 8-3 Mamaronek. Alongside Robert Reamer, I'm Charlie McGraw. And it is the faceoff is won quickly there by CJ Greco. He passes it to Fee, but it was stolen by Mamaronek and they'll run it up. And a good chance there for Suffern uh, after winning the faceoff, but they, they turned it over quickly. <laughs> And Robert is uh, well, yeah. it's an uphill battle for uh, Suffern down 8-3. What do they have to do uh, to get back in this one? As that one scored by Malice, right. a bouncer gets through Schulman, and it is two goals for Reed Malice. Well, the, although that goal makes things a little different, like Suffern did do a very good job not, I think, going upwards to six minutes without laying up a goal. 
against Mermanix. So that's really going to be the key. Mermanix up 9-3 now. If Suffering could, you know, it's really going to be, the defense is going to need to do a lot of the work. And like also getting some transition goals as well, quick goals would really help them out to get to that number. But if they let up more than five or six goals, or as many as they did last um, half, there's no chance. That one was in the air and still scrummed up. And Harley Jotso picks it up. And he'll play it all the way back and over the stick of CJ Greco. And he hits the turf hard. He was hit by Marinette played forward and a easy goal for Jack Harrigan, assisted by Quinton Sakakini. Second goal for Harrigan, and it is quickly 10 3. The Marinette starting the second half like they started the game. Right, and you'd wonder why that, why that happens. You know, you know, that they just come out of the gates and score two goals very quickly. What does that say about how the teams are adjusting at halftime? What the coaches are telling the players? You know, it's not just a coincidence. Violation against the Marinick. Shapiro will rush to the bench, picked up by Greenberg, and Greenberg will fire it over the head of Chris Conley, and it'll be a turnover, suffering ball. That'll be brought up by the Mounties. Hacked at by Ewald is the defender, Mike Corony. Suffern will play it. Start back as they played it back. And a shot is scored from a tough angle. Brandon Fee, he's got two goals. I think the key is to get the ball to Brandon Fee because two goals, and that was a tough one there. And he easily scored. The angle helped him out because it was a tough uh, save to make for Come on, let's go. the goalie, Jack Denty. No, yeah, if he could, right, if they could get some good shots on goal and not even have to you know, really beat Mermanic's defense in that way, that could really help him. The, the key is on goal, Rob. Right. They need to yeah, as we, yeah, as we said, Denti is only a sophomore. He's a, you know, a good goalie, but it certainly, like I think the defense is really what has been leading to offensive struggles for suffering so far. Nice play by Malice. Got his N1 mixtape uh, tour on there with those moves. <laughs> Do that before as well. well actually, there's Greenberg who did that before, but Malice that just stayed on his feet with some ridiculous moves, and it'll be played to Greenberg. Oh, Green Green Malice has been quite an athlete for for Marinick over the years. He played football a while ago. It's pretty amazing. This is going to be one of his last games. And that one is played and scored after being held by two guys. What a goal by Alex Ewalds, officially nominated for LMC Play of the Week. Charlie, I didn't know you had that power. <laughs> a great goal though. See, it was being held by two players. No, yeah. He got hit first, they threw two flags on the play, and it was still scored, 11-4. Not to brag, but I believe I'm the only announcer to have ever won a, um, <laughs> a Player of the Week award for uh, famously two years ago, um, the, the, the famous third down punt. <laughs> what, you called it? Or I, I had said, why, why you punt on third down? And Rob, let's just say, was not sympathetic to that point of view. And then Marinick did it to much success. And he, yeah. Right, in the Porchester game, and it was a really good move by Marinick. Did they actually punt on third? You're right, yeah. They punted on third down. So that violation will be one by Marinick. Marinek 
will bring it up. Still a penalty call because of the late hit there. Uh, Margolin. And that shot by Malice bounced. And Malice, after signing with Bucknell, he didn't play any other sports. They just made him not play football anymore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, focusing on lacrosse. Since he signed a uh, letter in tank right. to play for the Bison of Bucknell. Bucknell Bison, one of the better nicknames in college sports. will be in the Patriot League. I'm not sure what they're in for lacrosse, I think. There's no Patriot League for lacrosse, but it's mm. Patriot League for other sports. And Malice right on cue gets his third goal of the game and his three goals and an assist for Lee Malice as it's 12-4 for Marinick. And they are on pace for that 15-4 win over Suffer earlier in the year. All right, 12-4 now. I mean, these are one of those moments where if you're suffering, when do you do you accept that you're outmatched? Do you try to change? That one is scored again. This time by uh, Shapira. I believe so. Yeah, and it's right. Ben Shapira. Right, like and Rob. Shapira with the assist to Conley. Too quick for our eyes to be sure. So two goals for Chris Conley, assist by Ben Shapiro and his 13-4. They're starting, it was 8-3 at the half, they already got five goals. They got five goals in three and a half minutes here and that's what they got in the um, first half, five goals in four minutes All right. to start and that's what they're, how they're starting here. brought in by the Mounties and Greco who has a goal oh, scored by C assisted by Chember and Brandon Fee has a hat trick and it is 13-5, Mamarinek. Uh, Suffren's got to, um, it's good they're scoring at a decent pace, but they got to not allow the goals. It's easier said than done to Mamarinek in between. Right. They had two goals. Last no, I two. mean, yeah, goal-wise, five and, right, it's just 13 and more or less two quarters, two and a half quarters is unacceptable. You're not going to win very many games, like, very much like that. As that one is brought in, and they find Fee, and Fee going for his fourth goal is saved there by Denty. It's out in front and a illegal play against the Mounties, and it'll go to the Tigers. It was a good effort though after the goal and then winning the faceoff. Gotta like that if you're Coach David McAnally. As Denty's bringing it all the way out, and he will. Jeff Barnard says, you're not supposed to be that far out. I'll call a timeout, and we'll be right back on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, following the timeout by Mamarinek and the hit there by C.J. Greco. Greenberg gets through it, and he'll play it forward. Thirteen five, six fifty five to go in the third quarter. Still have another whole quarter left. Malice, nearly Evan Margolin couldn't get through it, and it goes over. And Conley's there. Key in lacrosse is to have someone like Cherry pick to the, behind yeah. the goal to get that uh, you know shot to keep possession. Kind of a weird concept. And that one will be scooped up by Brad Schulman. He'll play it short to Jotso. 
Yeah. Right, yeah, that's the thing wow. in the cross. The, the goal is in a much more arbitrary place than it is in any other sport of its kind. Jotso, I was wowing because Jotso got through Ewald and just body, used his body to get by him. And Coach McNally, David McNally, will call a timeout. And we'll be right back here on LMC Varsity Sports. 6 12 remaining in the third. 13 to 5, Amerinek. Suffern will have the ball next. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports. And Suffern following their timeout will have it and play it as six minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And that'll be Tim Patwell. And Robert, you look at these two teams' benches and about double the size. Is that one is scored by Luke Shedler? 13-6. Good assist by Kyle Billy. Well, I think with um, one thing you need to know about Maranek lacrosse is I think they take a broad array of talent. You know what I mean? So it's not... Five JV call-ups on the bench as well. Right, but like, so for the lacrosse team, they'll generally try to create like a more of a community type of culture. So even if you're not starting, you know, just playing lacrosse more as like a hobby, like, so I think they're able to like, you know, get both worlds in that way. And that one is won by Mamaronek, and a quick answer by Chris Conley as he's got a hat trick now to go along with Alex Ewald and Eric Greenberg. And it is 14 6, about four seconds to answer there. Because that faceoff was won by the Tigers. They scored so quickly, Ben Shapiro, who sometimes he's been going off, sometimes been staying on with that one. Let's go right back to the circle. <laughs> and a by, clear violation there by Greco. A couple times we've seen him do that. As that one, a huge hit there by Jotso. Penalty against trying to hit Greenberg and Suffern's fans don't like that call. 14-6. Greenberg has it. <laughs> Penalty on Johnson. Bench doesn't like it, fans don't like it. It's questionable. But let's face it, either way. Maranac is up 14-6. I mean, right. Call seemed fair. That looked like he was close to the... Well, I think a lot of, um, it seems like in the cross, a lot of the calls are very much like, you know, ju much judgment based. Yeah. You, you know, so it's not... Um, Especially a lot of parents, you know. They, right, they know yeah, all yeah, the yeah, rules yeah. They never even played the sport. They don't know that much about it, but. Well, yeah, that's one thing about lacrosse. You would have to imagine the, the parents watching it. It's really emerged in the last 20 years. Yeah, a lot of the parents, unless they they had their kids when they were like uh, 20 years. Right, they, they yeah, they don't know. Like, yeah. Right. I mean, because it was one of the first sports with the uh, Indians and the Iroquois yeah. and the nations playing it. But then after that, there was a big gap where. Right. Baseball, you got major, everyone plays baseball. Major League Baseball is so popular like, for people to follow. Right. National League Lacrosse is not. Those guys gotta have like two jobs. Like, is that one is scooped up and brought forward by the uh, Michelini. Uh, Michelini. Fired high, and a penalty as they were going to the benches. As penalty will be against.
chance. It was a penalty. It looked like Marinac, I guess. Oh, well, yeah. Suffern has the ball. Offside, something. Yeah. Some sort of technical offside penalty against my Marinac. Just a 30 second one. And that one is fired and scored. Second assist, Thomas Schember. Tim Pavel with the goal, and it's a touchdown for Suffern. But two touchdowns for Marinac, 14 7. And that'll bring Suffern's fans back into life. Ben Shapiro will take the faceoff against Evan Margolin. A couple of guys have taken the faceoffs Greco, Margolin, Fee. This one is one. Perfect timing there as he wins it and flips it to Greenberg, and Greenberg scores! Number four for Eric Greenberg. Give the assist to the faceoff man, Ben Shapiro. What a play, a Shapiro winning that. And then he just flipped it to him. Like so casual as well. <laughs> no, right, when you, Marinick seems to score, it goes a lot easier. Um, I don't know. Come on, D up. 15 goals um, in the third quarter. Marinick has a potent offense that a lot of people are going to have to contend with later on in the playoffs. And, uh, and we'll see against White Plains. Seven goals against um, in this quarter alone, you know? As Malice puts that wide. Because <laughs> it was 8 3 at the half. 11 goals in the third quarter combined. Seven. Marinick, three, suffer. No, no, four actually. Eight, three at the half it was the score. And that one, Tamalis just why? Well, the interesting thing about lacrosse is they decide to reward a goal with one point, but if you look at a lot of high school basketball games you'll watch, they won't really score much more, if, you know, if you were to give them a 30 points right now. So it's a pretty high scoring game. I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize. What, oh, the? Lacrosse in general. That you only get one goal for each, one point for each goal? Right, but if you compare it that's right, to, to basketball, they have 32 and in a lot of high school basketball games, the winning team will have yeah, 40 points. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, especially my Marinette. Right, yeah, so it's not, right, uh, right yeah, the teams How score How close a lot. the scoring is. Yeah. Also, though, in lacrosse, they play 12-minute quarters, and in right. basketball, they play eight. That's true. No, yeah, and then in lacrosse, you'll, you'll get more lopsided scores, but... As 16-7, halfway to 32. Robert just mentioned 32. Basketball. Offsides against Mamaronek. Suffering will get it. 16-7. Chris Conley had the goal, last goal for the Tigers, his fourth. So him and Eric Greenberg both have four goals. As that one will be thrown over the intended target. Dayton had it, but he lost it. Stolen there by Thomas Schember. Go, go. As Suffern will bring it up. Fans really get it on the rack. They got like that helmet and now they call it. And that foul is against Matt Brody. There was a second foul and a second hit. Matt Brody barely seen the field. He sees the field, he throws a <laughs> horrible hit. And we'll be right back as the trainer's on the field. Uh, back here on LMC Varsity Sports, 2, 10, and counting, as that was a penalty for that 
Blindsided hit two in a row by Matt Barodi. Six on four. Six on four. Double penalty. That one is shot high. I don't think either team, I can't remember, I don't think either team has scored on a man advantage. Well, there haven't been too many. There have been like so four or five. Yeah. Total. And that one is scored right on cue by uh, J.P. Cervic. Assisted by Shedler. It's 16 7. Violation on suffer. to win the face-up from America because there's still a man down because of that major penalty, basically. Quadruple team, but Greenberg is almost like he's having fun just getting by all of them. It's like he's uh, practicing out there. And a hit there, quick, from Nick Pond. Greenberg says, no problem. That's by Nick Pond. Triple teamed, and he still has it. He flips it, keeps it in play, and... To Malice. So the Marinex Bash brothers exchange the ball. Malice and Greenberg, they're two leading scorers and key players. And Malice whips one, and it's a save by the goalie, Brad Schulman. Brought up oh, by the Mounties. Still on the power play is Suffer. 28 to go in the third, and they turn it over. Costly turnover on the power play there. And that one is played forward to Charlie Harris. And what a pass! Greenberg to Conley and a late flag. But wow, what a pass, Greenberg to Conley. 17-7 behind the back. That was pretty cool there, Rob. Um, that, I think they've got a, um, a connection a lot of these players on the Marinek where they just know where each other are going to be and are able to pull off these moves. Five goals now for right. Conley. Four goals, three assists now for Greenberg. It's not including like a second assist or two that he had. So 16 seconds still on the sideline with the penalty is Brody. Picked up by Brett Young. He'll go and hand it off. And he'll go out. And the Marinek will just wind down the quarter as Harrigan will stay there. Good show of sportsmanship. 17 7 entering the fourth here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, enter the fourth quarter. 17 8. Marinick over Suffern. As leading the way from a Marinick, five goals for Chris Conley, four goals for Eric Greenberg, three for Alex Ewald, and three goals for Brandon Fee from Suffern. So we got four guys with multiple, uh, with three or more goals. Pretty uh, good. I think that's what you get in a 17-8 game, though. As if Marinette can hold this nine-goal lead, they will face White Plains, their rival, one of their rivals on Tuesday. They'll improve to 11-6, and six and Suffern will finish the year 11-7. and seven. As Marinette's 10-6, and six, two seeds, seven seeds Suffern, 11-6. and six. But they get the... Uh, had the higher seed based on strength of schedule and opponents, losses. 
the hit and fall into the turf there was suffering. And that one will be saved by the post and Brad Schulman. That one is scrum four. Penalty coming against because so many players that they could probably have uh, four, ga two games going on, you know, scrimmages. Right, if they had, I mean, because of the, including the, their JV call up second penalty of the game to Harley jo Johnson from Suffern. They have about 40 guys. Yeah, it's interesting that they, Suffern decided to, I guess it's an away game, but brought no JV call-ups when Merrick clearly has more players on their team than they need. So a lot of these schools, even the big ones, don't even have JV, like uh, lacrosse. Teams, I right, think they yeah. suffer and does, but yeah. That one is scored by Reed Malice, and he grabs his side. He's got four goals now. Ewald has three goals, Greenberg's got four, and Conley's got five. And Brandon Fee's got three for Suffer. 18-8, my Marinek. Yeah, stay tuned, coming up next, be on the call for girls lacrosse against LMC. Robert will grab a camera and go behind one. Yeah. We're gonna give you visual and audio <laughs> description entertainment today. As that one will be won by the Mounties, brought up, falling to the turf, losing it for a second, but it will stay with suffering as it was picked up there by Greco. Greco passes to Schember, who has two assists. That one will be played in and shot wide by the senior, Dayton Anderson. Interesting spelling of his name, uh, Dayton Anderson. A lot of Daytons are D-A-Y-T-O-N, like the Ohio, but his is D-E-I-G-H-T-O-N. Interesting. Uh, Little uh, name fact there. Despite despite the lopsided score, Jeffrey Barnard still yelling at his team. That one can't be scored by Suffer as Coach Aaron Tayback didn't agree with that one as Suffer knows. Keep it. Payback used to be the head coach at Bronxville years ago when I was at school there. Now he's an assistant here at Mamaroneck. It's Tim Oregon, the coach there, um, defending Class C. Other, no, they won, I think, the Class C state championship for Bronxville last year. Mamaroneck played them in March. Lost handedly. Like, I think it was 17 6 they lost to him. Similar score to this game. Because this one will be brought up by Brody, who got the map Brody, who had that hard hit before. But yeah, it's mostly uh, second string. He uh, hasn't clearly uh, emptied out that bench yet. And Suffern will have it here. So that one passed far up. And it'll be passed there. And Still loose in front. I mean, behind the goal, excuse me. Third, pl another player loses a stick. Suffering from losing their sticks a lot. That one played and scored by Suffering's Luke Shedler, his second, assisted by Andre, uh, McDaniel Andre. Eighteen nine. Actually, excuse me. C.J. Greco assisted, not McDaniel Andre. 
Second ass, uh, goal and assist now for Greco. Two goals for Shedler and an assist. And it is 18-9. If you're suffering, you want to try and make the score 748 a little more closer, you know, the final score. I mean, obviously it doesn't, you know, make up for the loss, but like maybe the final score be like 18-12 or, you know. 18 to 11, 19 12. No, that one off the post. Well, it's the last game for a lot of these players. Not a huge seniors, but a, a right. Decent you, you know, it, it's still. You don't play the game only to win. No. Particularly in high school. Then you need money. <laughs> <laughs> then you play the game for money. But Not in lacrosse. They don't yeah, that's really true. Make too much. Well, New I think York that's team. one of the best things about the sport, though. People who play it genuinely seem to really love it. Whereas, like, in other sports, I think there's a little more pressure because, you know, part of American culture. Yep. So I think, like, with lacrosse, generally everyone on the field is really, um, you know, enjoys what they're doing. Because that one will be... Greenberg, a great pass. And getting on the scoreboard was Tucker Light. Light. Tucker Light with the goal. So Tucker Light assisted by Greenberg. Greenberg now has four goals and four assists. Violation against <laughs> not J M Notchin and you know, right up here Notchin. Suffering will bring it behind the goal. Anderson. Intercepted though by Daniel O'Rourke. O'Rourke passes as Coach Barnard has emptied the bench. Not fully as they got a huge bench, but got a lot of players in there. Some some playoff experience. Tucked their light. Who got the last goal looking for another one? And he'll pass to Harris. Harris. Is a set. Harris plays a decent amount. He had an assist earlier. And that one brought in here by Jack Knowles. Knowles passes to Monahan. Monahan, Liam Monahan, will bring it out. Just use some clock here. Gordon to do. And that one will be shot high by Liam Monahan. Maranek looking for the big 2-0, 20th goal of the game. This one brought in. So Maranek will advance to play White Plains, the four seed, the three seed. And Maranek and White Plains earlier in the year, Maranek won 15-13 uh, at home. Oh, I think on the... I think a home game, yeah, 15 13. This LMC Varsity Sports producer reconfirms Rob Moretti. And a big hit there, a couple in a row drawn there by Luke Shedler. It'll be a man advantage coming up. I think about six total one in the game. Rangers up one up. 
Chopper and we'll have it here. Play it to Schember, who will play it. And that one will be scored by number uh, Dayton Anderson, number eight. So his first goal, senior of the game. And it is 19-10, double digits for the Mounties. Right, so I mean, this game Suffern really put up a sufficient amount of goals. It was really, the Mar Marinic offense, I think, just proved to be too much for them. Suffern wins that one. Looking to score two quick ones, nearly do. As we have a new goalie in the game and a huge hit, takes off the helmet. And it'll be a, we'll be back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Back here on LMC Varsity Sports, final 4-10. And a fortunate incident there is a hard hit. And a uh, big game against the uh, 19-10. That uh, was definitely not necessary, that physical hit there yeah. from Mamaronek as Evan Margolin was down for three or four minutes, but the hit was so hard his helmet came oh. off during the hit as that one hits the post. So I have a man advantage for a, a while for sure. As Suffer, nice pass there and score! CJ Greco assisted to Dayton Anderson. Two quick goals for Dayton Anderson. And Suffern's got some late life here. Two quick ones, 19-11 now as about two goals in 40 seconds, and they'll still have that power play. It's like a game misconduct, basically, in like hockey, where there's a game misconduct, you can score eight goals if, if you can, as many as possible. And that's what they'll get here, which is a big advantage. The only problem is, oh well, Ben Shapiro won't be taking it, but a lot of guys will not be taking. Um, right, yeah. I mean, you gotta subs. win the face off. So we got some subs in, JV call-ups, Luke Charla, in for the first time playing defense. Patrick Jeffrey. I was saying the JV call-ups are number 53, and but Luke Charla is a varsity player who does not play that much, who's in. Saying JV call-ups in general is that was a hit by Charla. Penalty. Charla comes in and gets a big personal foul there. <laughs> he was a lineman in football, right? No, well, oh, he played football? No, his older um, oh, brother, brother played. played. I don't know what um, he does. Yeah, but his, um, his brother, that was it. I, remember. I think he was injured his senior year. He played hockey, too. So. What was his brother's name? Yeah, Nick Charla. Yeah, he was a nice guy. And that one will be shot and scores! So Thomas Schember with his first call. And it'll be 19-12. Man advantage will stay. Stay a two-man advantage there. That was a quick goal. And there's been more miracles, but Definitely late scoring here. Three in a row because of the penalties. And let's see if Suffern can get the face off and it'll be official thought. Greco didn't realize that the official was giving him the ball, but he gets it anyway and uh, shoots it wide. Yes, they will keep it. So Suffern having late life here. Down seven. But there's no three or two pointers uh, in uh, lacrosse. And that one will be played forward. And that one will be kept and played. Suffern will keep it. 2.45 to go, 19.12. Mamera. Clock restarts, playing it. And it'll be 
wide. Backing it up though was Dayton Anderson. As it'll be brought in here by Anderson, he'll pass it out. And swung to Schember, plays it and a shot wide. Forgot to mention about 10 minutes. I think to start the fourth, Schlengel started the fourth uh, quarter. The goalie senior, Nick Schlengel. Started the game against Wontaw, but then he was replaced by Dent. The first game we did in the season. That one was swung around and suffering having uh, not hitting the, the goal on target like they did earlier in the game. Getting the shots, but the problem that they're not hitting them. Go. Rob, is that yeah. one as well? wide, low and wide. Yeah, it's good to see uh, Schlengel in. A couple JV call-ups, I think. Wide, as I think it's Bobby Bizzard and Andrew Lanny, because they're two JV call-ups, because there's no 52 and 53. The two JV call-ups are uh, both uh, those numbers and they're, they're both a long stick defense. That one is scored. That was CJ Greco with his third assist, passing it to Dayton Anderson, who scored his third goal. He's got three goals in about two minutes. But yeah, I think eight, eight scored that. Yeah, yeah. Look like eight or nine, as it's 19-13 with 149 remaining. Well, Sovereign's gonna make this look a lot closer than it was uh, at least a row. moment ago. I... Also, <laughs> Sovereign's got their like uh, a a squad, like their top right, players. Right now, of course. Now yeah. Shapiro just took his face off for some practice. He got the hard hit, no call. It'll step play on. Still loose, scrum in for it, and Shapiro will pick it up and bring it forward for the Marinek. He's got a clear path. Surprised he didn't just take it himself. Passes to Tucker Light and saved by the goalie, Schulman. Timeout called by the Mamaroneck bench and they want to reset. 19-13, 1 to go in the game. We will be right back here on LMC Varsity Sports. Here on LC Varsity Sports following the timeout by Mamaronek. And a violation there by Jack Harrigan. Oh, one more. Suffered. Oh, come on. As 105 remaining. 1913. And it'll be off of the Mounties, right in front of their bench. They only have like, oh, like 10 or 11 guys on the bench as opposed to Mamaronek's like 30. That one. A legal play against Mamaronek. will be brought up by Suffer. 53 seconds remaining here in the... Nice play there by Tucker Life. He's been good off the bench uh, with the goal and the steal there. And that one will be nearly stolen. Suffer has a shot to steal it, and they do. Turnover against Jack Harrigan. And that's a hit. As one of the JV call-ups got a welcome to varsity hit there. And Brandon Fee with it. That one when we play it in. So when Marinette did not give us the numbers of the JV callers, but we saw the names. And that one will be played. Two seconds left. Marinette will win this one. 19 13 as that one goes towards the goal. Schlingel knocks it, goes towards it. And Four third, uh, fourth quarter goals by Suffer. Overall, a great performance by Mermarinick. Obviously, it scores a little um, different than 
I would say, what really indicated how, how both teams play because Suffern scored so many times towards the end with dramatic subs in. But I think the performance really says some positive things for Mermeric going forward in the playoffs. They um, really performed well on offense today. Particularly with the passing, they were setting up goals, setting up shots on net that were fairly easy for them to get through. They set up a good showdown coming up against White Plains right. in their next game in the semis. Tiger, an all-Tiger semifinal. Um, final score 19-13. Just uh, with the players who don't play so much, they only got two goals. Suffern outscored them 6-2 in the fourth. But uh, final 19-13, Suffern played well at the end. They had some good chances. They just a lot of shots they hit wide. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have interviews and post-game analysis coming up next here on LMC Varsity Sports. Here with Eric Greenberg on the post-game show. And um, you guys scored a lot of goals today. What was um, clicking? Yeah, our, our offense was just clicking. Uh, we were moving the ball around. We knew that uh, Suffern slid, uh, slid early, so uh, they stayed on the double when they slid, and we just had to move the ball around, and we knew guys were going to be open, and you know, we just we just finished our shots. Um, so it was, it was good to get to get going uh, starting playoffs. Yeah, and what, what happened at the start of the game and then the start of the third quarter? You you guys scored several goals. Was there any like adjustments you made or? that led to that or you think it was a coincidence? No, we, we just we just stick, uh, stick to our game plan. Um, ben Shapiro won a lot of face-offs and you know like again we just finished our shots. Uh, we, we had good mechanics on our shots and they just happened to go back uh, go in the back of the net but we just stick to our game plan the, the whole game and uh, we knew coach always does a great job game planning. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what would your game plan be for White Plains you know or any differences? Uh, just play our game. White Plains is a great team. Um, they gave us a good outing last time. Uh, we're, we're rivals, you know, we're both Tigers, so we don't like each other. But, um, you know, just play Mamaronic lacrosse, um, blue collar team, and just put a lot of uh, goal, uh, balls in the back of the net, and our defense will make stops for us, and, you know, hopefully we'll win. Back here with Chris Conley, and Chris, it was a big win for you guys today, but it helped that you guys got out to a 5 nothing lead. Tell me about that. Uh, we came out, we played Suffern two weeks ago, so we knew we were expecting a good team. Um, you know, we just always feel the pressure now that we're, um, you know, our, our program has come so far in the past couple of years. We feel pressure that we need to do well in sectionals. So um, I think everyone just kind of had those butterflies at the beginning of the game, and it, it kind of pushed everyone to do better. And you and Eric uh, Greenberg connected a couple times. Uh, he, you had five goals, he had four. Uh, tell me about the connection between you two. Um, me and Eric play have been playing together for several years now. We play summer together. We're every day in practice. We're always looking at each other, trying to make the best looks that we can. I mean, he threw just a ridiculous behind the back pass to me at one point, and it was right on the money. So you know, um, you could say we have like a. I like to think we have like a Thompson brother kind of connection there, kind of telepathy. But um, we know where each other are. We know you know what cuts we'll make. So we have that going for each other. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that pass, but um, yeah, the. You guys play White Plains next. Uh, tell me a close win against them earlier in the year. Um, that was a game where, you know, uh, we definitely, I think we came out pretty well in that game too. We, we had a pretty good lead, but um, that was just the classic story of us this year, just not finishing games where, you know, they made a, a big comeback at the end of the game. We, we ended up winning, but um, definitely feeling pressure from them. They have the best team they've had in, in a while. So um, uh, we know what we're expecting, and, you know, we're going we're gonna to work hard in practice to see how we can uh, – Play, play best against them. And lastly, playing Bronxville, Wanta, and a couple other powerhouses, how did that prepare you for um, this first playoff game? Um, we played a real tough schedule uh, at the beginning of the year. Several tough teams, like you just said. Um, that just helps really just kind of figuring out where we need to be as a team and, and everything that we need to do to make us the best team we can be. So, you know, we lost those games, and a couple of them were tight games, so they were bummers, but, you know, they're paying off now. Here with um, Coach Barnard on the post-game show, and congrats on the win today. Thank you. Uh, what do you think led to the sec success in general? Um, I, I think that uh, you know our midfield did play very well, uh, and our attack played very well in, in transition. We won a bunch of face-offs, and uh, and we did a nice job on that front. With uh, um, Shapiro, did a very good job on that front, and our, our defense uh, in even situations uh, really stepped up and stopped them uh, after long possessions. So, and when our goalie did a great job too. Uh, we definitely uh, got out of sorts uh, towards the end there and uh, got some 
unnecessary penalties and played a little sloppy, but uh, we put you know about three quarters together that were pretty solid. Is there anything you tell your team you know at halftime or at the beginning of the game because in the beginning of the first quarter and third quarter is the most you're scoring a lot of goals? Um, you know, I, I think that they uh, my message to them is. Uh, is more than on the X's and O's in the cross front. It's really that if they really want to be standing on Thursday when the sectional championship uh, takes place, if they want to get to that point, um, they need to do what, you know, they really need to make a lot of sacrifices on and off the field and, uh, and do whatever it takes uh, on both ends, you know, taking care of your bodies, getting enough sleep, and uh, at the same time coming out on the field and really, uh, you know, selling out for ground balls and, and working as hard as they, they can uh, because, not, not a lot of success without sacrifice, but they did, they did that today. They worked really, really hard, and, uh, um, and uh, I know they're taking care of themselves, and hopefully we'll, we'll continue. And is there any change in game plan, or how are you going to prepare for White Plains? Uh, you know, we've played them uh, a couple times. We scrimmaged them. We played them this year. Uh, uh, you, and we know who their players are, but uh, they, you know, I'm sure they're going to throw new things at us. Uh, I saw them play a little bit this morning, and uh, they're a very good team. So. We'll definitely change the game plan based on the players they have, for sure. Back here on the post-game show, final score 19-13, and Rob, it was a good win, but what helped was coming out and getting five early goals, and then they got uh, four straight to start the second half. Uh, sh the streaks to begin the game and the second half were huge. Yeah, Mermarinick seemed to really, particularly on offense, be in command throughout this whole entire game. When they were trying to score, wanted to do things, they were able to. Conley and uh, Greenberg, we both interviewed them. They're... They have a really good connection right next to the goal, and they were really able to finish off. And then with help with people like Reed Malice as well, it was just a stellar performance on offense today. And the defense was very good as well. But that offense, uh, putting up 19 goals really in three quarters but against a good suffering team, I think is pretty impressive and should be pretty scary for other teams uh, heading into the later rounds of the playoffs. And second time they beat them too. They beat them uh, two weeks ago, not the easiest thing to beat two teams in the span right. of two weeks. I mean, the same team twice in the span of two weeks. A lot of offensive weapons uh, helps them as well. So that'll mm -hmm. wrap it up. Final score, 19-13. Mamaronek will advance to play White Plains in, uh, on Tuesday. And the uh, three seed, White Plains, will come here to face Mamaronek. A lot of people to thank for the day's telecast, including the executive director, Eric Luce. The associate director is Matt Sullivan. Community sports producer is Mr. Rob Moretti. For our cameramen, Xavier Campo, Asher Collins, and Rob Moretti. Once again, for Robert Reamer, I'm Sean McGraw saying thanks so much for watching and have a great evening.